Good morning or good afternoon in Sydney. How are you? I, I know. Actually, I'm, I'm, I find myself in Melbourne, Australia today. It is 6 p.m. And, uh, and uh, you know, it is uh, it, a, a beautiful summer's day. Uh, so who knew? Who knew? You're going to make me You don't want to hear that, though, because your people yeah. are waking up. It's like pitch black. They don't want to hear that it's a beautiful <laughs> summer's day. It's pitch black and it's two degrees outside. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. And we've got the whole day to, and we've got the whole day to um, look forward to. So thank you. I am so grateful for you joining me this morning. Um, I have the pleasure of listening to you, Chris, in Australia at ARIC um, two and a half years ago. You were one of my favourite speakers. So um, thank you. Thanks. Um, Thanks. Good morning, morning, Dave. Thanks very much for joining us. It's very kind of you. So I just want to read a little summary um, from there. And we've got a very good audience this morning. So please give Chris some lights, give him some hearts um, to get out or to, well, I'm up this early, you're up this early. So thank you. So Chris is a business communication genius um, and master oh. storyteller whose presentations has radically transformed how thousands of people worldwide communicate with clients, customers, colleagues, staff, and teams. He's been a professional speaker for over 16 years and has done over 2,000 presentations around the world. He is the author of two best-selling books, The Ultimate Book of Influence, um, which has been published in five languages, and it's not your latest release anymore, Useful Beliefs, which is one of the best-selling business books in Australia of all time. So congratulations. That's amazing. Thanks very much. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you work with Citibank, Merrill Lynch, GlaxoSmithKline, Toyota, Mercedes, to name a few. So I'm incredibly yeah, cool. grateful that you're with Stephen Brown this morning So and the audience. So thank you so much. That's well, Stephen a- Brown, thank you for having me, and thank you to this uh, great audience for getting up and, uh, and, and listening. That's wonderful. Oh, you're very kind. So I just want to start by asking you one question. How did you start? How did you get into it? How do you go and speak in front of two for over 2000 audiences? <laughs> well, I suppose, Stephen, you saw me speak in, in uh, at the Eric, the big real estate conference yes. over here in Australia. And, and I imagine your audience already can hear that I'm my accent is not Australian, although it's a little bit Australian. But I did. Uh, I've lived half my life in the United States. I grew up there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I was always a competitive person. I played American football, played college American football, competitive person who also did theater. And, you know, I think when you put competition theater, I studied psychology and sociology, you put a little mindset in there. Um, and, and I came out to Australia cause I met a girl and, uh, as you do, and, um, <laughs> and and literally, I came out here and I and, and I went to work in real estate. So uh, this is your business. This is and I, and I got you know I, I was involved uh, as an agent for about seven years. And after seven years, I uh, you know I was the Victorian auctioneer champion. I was uh, I was I was or I was just being asked to speak and talk to different real estate companies on how to do things a bit better. And and I just fell in love with it. I, I just fell in love with speaking and. And here I am, yeah, to two plus thousand presentations later. Um, I just think you put competition in in combination with, um, you know, probably a little bit of, I mean, a lot of stand-up comedy in my show. So, and, uh, and and throw that in with, you know, the real estate sales expertise. And it's, yeah, it's just a great combination. And I, I've just had a blast. I've, I've literally been, um, I mean, I've been speaking, yeah. I mean, as you said, 16 years, it's incredible. Amazing. Well, let's just say we've got a few people joining us. So welcome, Ian. Welcome, James. Welcome, Andy. Thanks very much for watching this morning. Good morning to you. Please share this um, out there as wide as we can to get some loving as well for Chris this morning or this evening in Melbourne, who's kind enough to join us. So thanks for sharing that. So just going back to your agency days, what was it like to be a real estate agent in Australia? Uh, look, it, you know, it is probably quite different. I, I got really excited about it when I first came over here because you got to know I was 20 nothing years old. And, you know, so I was literally just off the, you know, just off the ship, an immigrant, uh, you know. No, I wasn't really you know, carrying my bags off. The, I did fly here. But, uh, no, I, you know what? I, um, I, when I got started, I got so excited about the Australian system, and particularly the Melbourne system, because it's an auction-based system. So it's, it's a really... 
uh, it, it just struck me as street theater, you know, and, and I just fell in love with it. So we'd list a house and then we would have a series of three open for inspections on three consecutive Saturdays. We'd have three 30 minute inspections on the Saturday, three 30 minute inspections on the Thursday, and then it would go to auction. And on the Saturday, the whole street comes out and, uh, you know, it is just one after the other. And, uh, I started doing that in the mid nineties. Um, Geez, that dates me, Stephen. I don't want to get too carried away here, but uh, it was the mid '90s, and um, and uh, the, doing that in the mid '90s, you know, it was just uh, we virtually probably auctioned. The market was strong. We probably auctioned ninety percent of the houses, um, and, and probably eighty percent of them sold in the street on the day. And and uh, just a just a, it was such a buzz. So that was like my first introduction. I was just like, wow, this is young twenties. You know, here's an opportunity to make money and. And have some fun doing it so i thought it was great brilliant so useful beliefs <laughs> yes so, i'm a very positive person um and i've read that i shouldn't be positive i should have useful beliefs <laughs> all right well this is where i'm going to connect with this uk audience i think right it's um you, you know the <laughs> i was fascinated you know for a lot of years watching other speakers who told people to be positive. You need to be positive, they would say. And I would watch the response of people as they go, hur, hur, right? And you watch all the sudden, because people don't want to be put upon, right? And if I say to you, come on, Stephen, be positive, you go, whoa, poof, poof, right? We don't want to be put upon. Um, and I started to read all these, you know, I came up with this idea about 10 years ago now. And this idea of useful belief, and which has been my TED Talk idea, and it's the it's the title of my best book, and and it's the keynote that I that I do, and and um, the reality of it is is I did all this research on it and worked out that positive thinking doesn't really work. I mean, not really, because if you wake up in the morning and go, "Come on, Chris, just be positive today," you can do it. Just be positive, right? But by ten o'clock, when something bad happens, and twenty twenty, it hasn't been too hard to find that. And uh, all of a sudden, something bad happens, and boom, right now, actually, the studies show you feel worse about yourself than when you even started, right? So you're like, I can't even do positive well, right? So it's not positive thinking. Instead, it's useful. So it's, uh, and, and my idea was useful belief. And starting to think about, all right, it's not positive, but if you're at ground zero, and obviously, I work with real estate agents at every single level there is, and, and you know, if you're at the beginning or you're at the base, or maybe you've had a fall for whatever reason, if you're at zero, to get from zero to two, it's not positive thinking. It's going to be this word, useful. What's the most useful thing for you to do today to get from zero to two? What's the most useful action for you to take to get from two to five? And then ultimately, when it really changes for you, what's the most useful belief for you to have to get from five to eight? And uh, and that, that premise has exploded here in Australia, and especially with real estate. I mean, obviously, you saw me speak on the subject uh, at Eric out here. And it really is just, you know, this is, and I'll tell you what, it's been put to the test this year, Stephen. It has. It's been put to the test and it has, uh, you know, come through with flying colors. Don't be positive. <laughs> <laughs> so and the, good, the good thing about that is it's not being put upon. You know, you've got to, if I say to you, what's the most useful thing for you to do today? You've got to come up with that. That's, that's your thing. It's not nothing to do with me. I'm just throwing it out there for your brain to come up with it. Okay, so if I'm a two or three at the moment, how do I get myself to go to three to a five or three to a six? Good, all right. What are the things, like, are the things I can do to really help give me myself those useful beliefs, get that confidence um, to change my belief system and my mindset and have that growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset? All right, well, let's, let's first of all understand that bad things happen and bad things happen to good people and we've seen that and, you know, um, by the way, I uh, just just on sort of my journey with the useful belief this year. Um, on the twelfth of March, I walked into the Adelaide Qantas Club. I uh, just done a presentation for two hundred agents in Adelaide, and I walked in and I looked up, and the National Basketball Association in America had, had suspended their season, uh, and that was like the moment I knew it was real. I mean, everybody was walking around, sort of giving everybody the elbow and doing the thing. But that was a moment I knew it was real. And in fact, I had 60 presentations lined up overseas, you know, New Zealand, Asia. It was all lined up. And within 72 hours, I watched every one of them. Boom, 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 cancel. 
And I want to just say, if you're at two or three, I, I want to, this is a really important point because grief is part of the process and grief is okay. And there's nothing wrong with feeling bad when you're going through a tough time. Um, and it was interesting just from my perspective, because uh, first of all, you never want to be a motivational speaker and have something go wrong because all of a sudden you're like, I lost 60 gigs. I'm feeling a little sad. You get no sympathy from anyone. I can tell you right now. They're like, they're like, why don't you go read your own book? They're like, why don't you give yourself a motivational talk, right? Like nothing. You get nothing from anybody, just for the record. I just want you to know that. Don't be a motivational speaker and expect sympathy, right? You get nothing. And uh, and I just want to say, I spent, look, I, I really spent a couple of tough weeks while I tried to sort myself out. And and you know, I just want to say grief is totally normal. And 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 then it's like there's also a point where you get to where you go, right? You're at a two or a three and you go, all right, enough. I'm gonna draw a line in the sand. I'm drawing a line in the sand today and enough, because it's no longer useful. It's not serving me any longer. Right. And again, this is our own personal decisions. What I love about this is you come up with it yourself. But for me, I got to a place I was like, I'm drawing a line of sand. This this feeling sorry for myself is no longer useful. What's happening? And everybody's on. The next thing I know, we're doing virtual, right? And uh, next thing I know, we're you know we're, I'm, I'm training myself, and I'm I've got myself a studio, and I'm 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 working out exactly how we're going to do this. And and you know, useful belief is uh you know there there it was in one day where I all of a sudden was like, hang on, I, I just did a gig for the National Hockey League in Canada. I turned around, and just did another gig in the afternoon for Prudential in Beijing, and I could tra- and, and I finished the day, which was my favorite gig of the three of them. At this little Western Sydney real estate office, right in uh, six people, all all from my living room, right. I didn't wear shoes, uh, just a pair of shorts and a black T-shirt, and here I am being able to connect all over the world. Now, Stephen, it's not as much fun. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to come to London. I want to travel with you. I want to tour with you. I want us to to hang out, but um, it's not as much fun. But all of a sudden, you can pivot and go. All right, my useful belief is I'm going to get good at this, and I'm going to try to help people through this time. And, you know, it has been interesting. A lot of people have gone through this lockdown COVID period of time and, 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 and actually some people have loved it, right? Some people are like, I'm an introvert. Um, I enjoy being home. I, I, I learned to speak Spanish. I, I now play the cello. Um, I have a great relationship with my dog. Um, some people have loved every bit of this and, uh, and others have suffered. And I think, I guess I would say the same thing to your people. Whatever's happened and however you've dealt with it up till now, don't be mean to yourself. Like, don't be hard on your it, look, all the words unprecedented, uh, you know, crazy. Like, just whatever's happened till now, it's okay. Right? Today, let's draw a line in the sand and let's actually think about all right, let's think about now what's going to be useful from here. You know, what am I going to bring forward? Um, and Stephen, cut me off any time. I'll tell you, what, the one thing I'm really hitting on this right now, though, is that, is that 2020 to me, from a mindset perspective, I think 2020 was survival. I think 2020 was pure um, uncertainty. And that was that thing that really hurt people, I think. Sur- uncertainty and survival. Would, uh, today, we draw the line in the sand. 2021 is about performance. 2021 is about results. 2021 is about action. And and we now have what we need to go do that today, right? I mean, 2020, crazy uncertainty. And I'm not saying there's not uncertainty out there, but at the same time, we now, we, we've mentally got this. Now it's time, boom. Now it's performance, results, and action right now. Okay, so that's a really good point. And I'm gonna come back because I wanna talk about influence and you know, especially when agents okay. going on their appraisals and presentation and how they yep. mirror people and, and whatever. But I just want to come back on what you spoke about, performance results and actions. So I know yep. people watching this, a lot of them are have great ideas, absolutely fantastic ideas, but really find it challenging to action them and implement them um yeah how can you take action what tips have you got for people to take action to implement the good stuff that they hear from exceptional speakers like you rather than coming to our getting this lovely picture of you sticking it in their bottom drawer and that's <laughs> it they never uh-huh, it. There you go. well look it came back though didn't it it came back out didn't it it came back out 
I was surprised I found it so easily this morning. <laughs> Stephen, I think I, I think when we take a look at it, we overcomplicate things. And and I, I'll tell you who's annoying me at the moment. This can be a bit of fun. I'll tell you who's annoying me at the moment globally. Um, American motivational speakers. Can we just say that? I'm, I'm going to have a shot right now. An Ameri I'm going to call myself Australian here and say, uh, uh, and I'll tell you why, because so often I think what they do, and you know, you go to the conferences and they, they talk about this idea of transformation. Transformation. Come to my four day seminar and you will be transformed, right? And, and they try to hit you with all this that you need to be transformed. You don't need to be transformed. I mean, most people are amazing. I mean, I have no doubt you could probably walk down the wrong street in London and look up and you're like, no, that guy actually does need a lot of work. But for the most part, when we talk about real estate edges, hey, I mean, it's, look, it's actually a simple shift, right? And to me, it's just about waking up. It's just about all of a sudden being conscious. Um, I was on the Today Show over here a couple of weeks ago, and she said, how long does it take to transform your brain for useful belief? And I was like, what? Uh, transform your brain. You don't have to, you just got to wake up. Like you just got to literally think to yourself, what is the most useful thing I could do today? What's the most five useful things I could do today? Uh, how about this one? Who is useful? Who's not useful? Um, by the way, 2020 is definitely the year to get rid of toxic people from your life. We don't have to put up with those people anymore. And those people are the people that make you feel worse about yourself after you spend time with them. They're not useful, right? They're not useful. So we start thinking about uh, and useful beliefs become like this, right? Um, this is the best time in the history of the world to be in real estate. Now, question, is it true? I want to hit this. I already said positive thinking doesn't work. I'm going to hit this now. Truth doesn't matter. All right, you create your own truth. And, and don't not hear what I'm saying. Don't, if it's raining outside, you can't walk outside and say it's not raining. That's denial. But useful belief is you walk outside and it's raining. That's your reality. You can't change that. So now you say, I love walking in the rain. I love jogging in the rain. I love driving in the rain. Boom. That's useful belief. Yeah, and actually, just bringing it back to, to real estate and what you were saying, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. Um, and actually, in the UK, the real estate market here has been crazy. Yep. Um, and the useful belief is actually we're very fortunate um, that this industry is allowed to work. You know, whereas I was speaking to somebody yesterday who felt very guilty that, yep. um, you know, they were fortunate, but other people weren't less fortunate. Um, yeah, you know the hospitality and trying to overcome that. You know that, I suppose that guilt that they had that you know there's other people out there that's suffering, but the UK real estate industry isn't. Morning well, and I I'd shift the guilt to empathy, and and I think we I, I wouldn't get involved in guilt. Guilt will guilt will um, impede your success. I think this is the best time in the history of the world to be in real estate. Boom, opportunities everywhere. That's a useful belief. And, and you know, and it is unfortunate. There's other industries or, or people right now, uh, including speakers, by the way, um, that are probably not doing it as easily. And and I think, um, you know, that's okay. I mean, you know, it's, it's listening, it's talking to people, it's understanding. Um, but this useful belief, uh, like this is the best time in the history of the world to have a global pandemic. Boom. That's a useful belief. Um, people are like, what are you talking about, Chris? And I'm like, think about it. Imagine if we had to go through this 20 years ago, right? You would have been, uh, uh, no, no Netflix, what? No, 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 no platform, no virtual platforms, no, no, you know, no, no PlayStation. What would you, you'd have been sitting on your phone playing snake, like uh, on your little block, block Nokia. I mean, like, uh, I've got it. Don't knock it. <laughs> what do you, hey, this is the best time in history of the world of a global pandemic. Best medicine, best technology, best uh, opportunity for vaccine, uh, most ventilators. You know, we, look, this is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. And when I say that, you know, it's all about controlling the filter in your brain. And if you say these are tough times, the filter in your brain shuts down, Stephen. And that, that's called the reticular activating system, but we don't have to worry about that. You got to filter. It shuts down. And if it shuts down, right, also tough times, Chris. These are tough times. And don't worry. Guess what? And by the way, if you believe in tough times, I do recommend a lot of news. I think the news will help. I'd watch the noon news. I'd watch the 6 o'clock news. I'd watch, uh, I'd watch uh, whatever you got, Bachelor in Paradise or Bachelor. 
I, just to learn how to form healthy relationships. Uh, uh, you know, I'd watch, uh, you know, look, and don't worry, in a minute, you'll be paranoid and, and believing everything. And you know what? This is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. And when you believe that, you know what? It really is. And you know, start to see beautiful things and you see opportunities. And just to bring it back to real estate, there's just one thing. I have worked with hundreds of thousands of agents. There's one thing that separates out the best agents in the world from the average. Um, and most people are average, Stephen, by the way. That's why they call it average. Um, but here we go. The one thing that separates out the best agents in the world from the average is this. The best agents in the world, they see opportunities that other people don't see. And it's that, they walk into every situation with a useful belief and go, we're gonna make money in this market. You know, I was talking to this guy, one of the richest suburbs in Sydney called Double Bay. And this real estate agent, he goes, Chris, it's a really difficult time right now to sell real estate in Double Bay. It's a really difficult time to sell real estate in Double Bay. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a difficult time to sell real estate in Kabul, not Double Bay. Boom, this is the best time in the history of the world to sell real estate in Double Bay. What are you talking about? And, and you know, we really could look at whatever our situation is. Like if you're single right now, people are like, Chris, I'm lonely at the moment. It's like, time out. Hang on. You're not lonely. You're alone. And this is the best time in the history of the world to be alone. And people are like, no, it's not. It's, I'm like, yes, it is. Imagine if you were alone in the year 1778, right? You'd have been in some northern European shack somewhere with the wind whipping through, freezing your ass off, knitting some crappy jumper by a candlelight at 3 o'clock in the morning. That would have sucked, right? There, that would have been a terrible time to be alone, all right? This useful belief, if you're alone now, there's 33 things you can do at 3 a.m. to make yourself happy. Boom, this is the best time in the history of the world to be alone. Right, whatever your situation is. I had this guy come up to me, he's 55 and broke. His wife just left him. He's like, Chris, I'm 55 and I'm broke. My wife just left me. I'm like, fantastic. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is the best time in the history of the world to be 55 and broke. And he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, imagine if you were 55 and broke in 1929. You had four more years on the planet. The only job you would have been able to get is shoveling coal. It would have been a shit time to be 55 and broke. I said, today you got 40 more years on the planet. Boom, pull your pants up, make something happen with yourself. This is the best time in the history of the world to be 55 and broke. Whatever your situation is, it's okay. Draw a line in the sand today and let's figure out some useful beliefs to cat. Here, Stephen, I don't mean to be the bear of bad news for your people. It's early, it's early in the morning over there. But I do have to say this, just so we're all on the same page, the survival rate on this planet it's exactly 0%. None of us are getting out of here alive, right? In 100 years, nobody on this call is going to be anything more than a paragraph on Ancestry.com. So here's the thing, right? This is your time. This is your time. And I hear people all the time try to change it. They go, oh, I wish it was 2017. There were good times. I wish it was 2008 before global financial crisis. It was a good time. I hear people say, 98. They were great time. I could smoke at my goddamn desk. 98, good times, right? But here's the thing. It's, it's not 98. It's not 2008. It's not, it's not 2017. This is the best time in the history of the world to be alive because this is the only time we got. And this is it. This is it. Well, David Mintz agrees with you. It's the best time in the world for breakfast. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Boom. David. Thanks for joining us, Nick. I appreciate it. Um, so coming back to qualities, and I and I love the fact they see the top performers see opportunities. Um, yeah. That other people see. What other qualities do you see that top performers have got as agents? I think I think to to just to close the loop, I suppose on that would be um, that they they've got the the mindset of opportunity. They've got the useful belief, and then I think the second thing I think is that physical piece that falls in, um, that delivers the sense of, uh, I've always I've always said um, great salespeople do two things well, great real estate agents do two things well. They deliver their message with these two things. They deliver their message with certainty and simplicity. The greatest real estate agents are absolutely clear about the message they're delivering and nobody buys when they're confused. So certainty and simplicity. And, and I think 
I think as part of that, you know, we talked a little about posture off air and, um, you know, just even body language and how, you know, we show up every day, you know, and I think delivering with that certainty, you know, it is posture as an auctioneer, it's posture, you know, and, and it's eye contact and it's being present, you know, and it is smiling. I, I know, um, you know, I know sometimes people say, uh, <laughs> people say what smile, but, but like, you know, it, just on communication studies, every communication study says the same thing that when you, that when you smile at another individual, that you actually make them feel good about who uh, you make them feel good about them. Like that's crazy. I mean, Stephen, if you said to me right now, I've got a brand new product, which will instantaneously make every one of our sellers and buyers feel good about themselves. I'll give you millions of dollars for that. We can go travel the world together and sell it. I mean, we got it. It's a smile. And I, and I always look around audiences. You can say, you know, you go, there's a smiler and there's a smiler. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of you out there, you know, you know, you like, I tried that once. It didn't really work out, but uh, maybe try it again. Um, you know, and I think just a, the, the gratitude piece, you know, the gratitude piece, I think just putting those things together, you know, posture, eye contact, be present, smile, drive from gratitude. And it just the bottom line is that people respond differently to you. And and that's the thing. And, and that doesn't mean you have to be crazy over the top American like me, you know, but it's just about being you in the most natural, authentic way. And, you know, Stephen, I think, I think authenticity is one of the biggest words this year. And, uh, you know, our ability through these platforms to connect with more people and we can do it in a black t-shirt or we can, people don't expect you to drive halfway across town and you can, have meetings that are quicker and faster and more casual. But I'll tell you what, the one thing is that the, the, the no bullshit filter is up for the whole world. And, you know, now's the time. And this is so great because you, you can literally create a real estate business now and just be authentic and be you. And, and I got to tell you, Stephen, I have seen, I have seen wide real estate agents be successful and I've seen little skinny ones. Right, I've seen real tall ones, and I've seen real short ones be successful. I've seen them successful, every different color possible, and every different, however identification possible, however they want to identify themselves. Everything I've seen. You know what? It's none of that. But I'll tell you what: the greatest real estate agents all have a process, and they follow a process, and they follow that. And it doesn't matter. Like I mean, I think. You know, my style's me. I mean, what I love so much about my business is I can be me, right? I, I guess I would throw that back to everybody listening to this and go, have your business be you, right? I mean, you might, there might be people that don't like my style, but I'm totally okay with that. Like, I can't control that, you know? But ultimately, get your business, you know, in a space that is totally you and that you feel really great about. And, um, you know, I, I think the one thing COVID's taught us, there are things we can't control. And we all know that. And there's things we can't change. Um, and that's a reality for all of us. But with the things you can't control and the things you can't change, the one thing I got to say, if you can't control it or can't change it, then come up with a useful belief about it. And come up with a useful belief that gives you power. Come up with a useful belief that gives you power. Brilliant. Thank you. So can I talk about going on market appraisals? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, or inspections or whatever you call them over there. Um, so how can you learn um, to read and adapt to different people's personalities when, they're, when you're on the appraisals? What are you looking for? What's the body language? You talked about body <laughs> language, talk about influencing, talk about having a smile on your face. I don't know whether you've ever heard the Spike Milligan poem at all. Tell me. smiling is contagious you catch it like the flu have you heard that one yeah yeah there you go i've heard that one yep 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 so, you know yeah. Stephen, i think um I, I think i think the important thing you know and, and you could apply this to real estate or or friendships or children or uh you know um dating <laughs> you know i think i i think with all of it um people give off a different intensity. And I think, you know, in my influence book, I talk a lot about the different personality colors and how once you get to figure someone out, 
you can really start to adapt the presentation to that person and you can adapt um, you can adapt the actual material you give them to suit how they would want to get that information. Um, I think as an initial thing at an inspection or an initial thing, I just really to take a beat because we're all so nervous when we meet people and, and I think to take a beat and really just be awake, right? Useful belief, I'm here from the heart. I'm not here to list this house in the first two minutes. I'm driving from the heart. Don't drive from the ego, drive from the heart and really look around and actually just, I mean, and here we go. I look around and I can see that I've got, well, hang on, these two are both accountants. They're, everything's perfect. Like everything's in its place. These people are process people. So don't overwhelm them with rah, rah. Let's hit them with absolute precision in terms of what we're going to do. Um, the place is a mess. She's wearing a loud flowery dress. She says, oh, you know my friend Cecile and, you know, in they go. And do you want a drink anyway? You can have a drink. Like you can have a drink. It doesn't She's, you know, the gregarious outgoing person. She doesn't need the detail, right? She needs the affirmation, right? So, you know, this, it, it really is thinking about and noticing. You get someone else's CEO, they got the laser eyes going, right? You can just see them. They got laser. I mean, these are not people you're going to spend 20 minutes with. This is a, this is a 10 minute meeting. This is bullet points. This is uh, right. Boom. We're about to get the result and starting to think about, you know, and I talk a lot about it in the book, how to influence people, but, you know, to really just take a beat and then adapt ourselves to what's going on. I think that's actually a gracious thing to do. Yeah, you don't have to do it, but I think it's a gracious thing to do. Okay. So I'm very grateful of your time. I'm going to ask you um, a couple of final questions, if that's okay. And then Fire away. You, and leave you to enjoy the Melbourne evening. Um you talk about something called the Ford technique. Ford technique's amazing. Um, and um, it's as simple as uh, it, the art of conversation. So if I go to a, um, not that we can probably do this just exactly at the moment in England, uh, in the UK, but let's, why don't we say uh, uh, I'm at a barbecue and there I am talking to someone. This is conversation piece. And I've got F-O-R-D in my head, Ford, right? And it's very simple. F is family. So I'm at a family barbecue in this context. And I say, so which one of these kids is yours? And, you know, oh, fantastic. And, you know, yeah, that's what, he looks just like you. And he's, oh, my wife and I are very proud. Where's your wife? She's there. Oh, lovely, fantastic. And, and where do you live? What schools you go to? F. And then the shift of the O. So what do you do for occupation? So um, what do you do for work? You know, what do you do? What do you do, mate? And uh, he tells me he's a financial advisor. I always advise people, by the way, at the end of the O to always say, geez, mate, wow, you sound busy because people just love to hear they're busy. Uh, it's uh, in normal times anyway. Uh, you know, geez, you must be, uh, man, you are busy. And people love to hear, hear that. So FO, and then, mate, you're so busy. What do you do to get away from it all when you're not, uh, when you're not doing all this? What do you do to relax? So that's the R. And, um, you know, somehow, and that doesn't mean, by the way, you're going, tell me about your family. Tell me about your occupation. Tell me about your relax, all right? I mean, you're gonna have an art form to it, but it's in your head, right? And F-O-R, and then the D is dreams. So, and, and from a real estate perspective, I'm obviously just trying to figure out, I mean, they, you know, like myself, I've got three kids, my boys are 20, 17, 15, um, you know, so hang on, they finish school. What does that mean for selling the house? You know, are you looking to downsize? What, what would that be? So again, finding out that I want a holiday house somewhere or, you know, who knows? Um, but you're going to find out what those dreams actually are. So look, to me, actually, it's so funny. I do like CEO conferences and CEOs are um, notorious for being amazing at building businesses. And their worst day of the year is when they actually have to talk to the employees at the employee picnic, right? The worst day of the year is at the conference when they've actually got to be on the floor and actually be seen to be talking to people. I've had that many CEOs come up to me and go, man, Ford, oh, save my life. Like, I just sit there and go, so tell me, tell me, how's your family going? And uh, how do you find it work at the moment? What's the great challenge? And anyway, I've had so many great, uh, this is a great thing. It's very funny. So it, it's a terrific technique. And obviously when I train on it, 
And actually, we're going to do the tour, Stephen, in, in the UK. So let's get these companies pumped up to, you know, when's this going to happen? 2022. Is that right? There you go. You heard it here first. All right. Let, breaking, I'm going to do it. Break, breaking news. I want to spend about six months in the UK just traveling around. Let's just uh, let's uh, let, let's do this. We'll we'll go from company to company. But what I do, I obviously go into great detail about how to use Ford because you can use it in a database sense as well. It's making sure you get the right information in the database. You can use it in a listing sense. You can use it in a lot of different senses. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, you there? Steven? Hey. Nothing oh, like I'm back. You're back. Nothing like technology at 7.35 in the morning. <laughs> oh, everybody right. must have got on the computer. Yeah. Right. So one final question. Um, obviously, yep. apart from your exceptional books, which people should be downloading from, are they on Audible? Or are they all on They're Amazon? on Audible. So you've got on Useful a Beliefs, Cut the Noise, and The Ultimate Book of Influence. And I know you've got one that you're you're coming out again, Simple Shift. Simple um, Shift is an awesome listen, by the way. I, um, if I was going to give people advice, I'd start with Simple Shift as an Audible. Um, I just recorded that, and that's uh, up on Audible. And that's a really nice sort of, uh, I reckon, and Useful Beliefs are great Audible as well. I think they're the two best Audibles. Um, on Amazon, they're all there. That's and in this the way international post is traveling at the moment. That's probably definitely the way to go. So uh, um, that's great. But all my videos are on the website at chrishelder.com, and uh, there's tons of videos. My TED talk is up there as well. And um, if they can't remember that, Stephen, it's my name's Chris Helder, and they can just add dot com. So lovely. So one final question: What about books that you've come across that you've read that you think are exceptional that people watching or listening should um, should look at and read? And well, it, it's interesting. I'm. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, that's always a tough question. That's always a tough question that, for me to to answer because I um th there are there are many and some of them are Australian authors that. Um, that I sort of know. And, uh, you know, I think, let me say this, let me, let me attack the book industry just for a second. I think one of the worst things about self-help books, let me just, uh, and, and, you know, uh, is that there's, they're so big, you know, they're so big, all these books, like useful belief and simple shift, they are hundred page, but you can read them in an hour and a half. And uh, my other speaker friends over here, give me a hard time because they actually say that I write pamphlets and not books, but I got to say, I've got in my library, I've got 500 self-help books and I reckon I've finished three of them. I, I think I've finished three of them. And, you know, actually one of the three I finished just recently was Mark Manson. Uh, I have read all the Mark Manson books and, and I think um, I do like Mark Manson. I think his, his message um, is not dissimilar to mine. I think, um, you know, in, in, you know, he talks about, giving an F and, 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 uh, you know, how many F's given and, and, but it is about sort of really what's useful in terms of what am I spending my time on? So I, I don't talk, like when I read his book, I actually, I thought that resonated with me a lot. And I, and uh, you know, I, I know some people that I, I don't know Mark actually, but I, I know some people that know him and I think he's, uh, I think it's, that's pretty cool. I also, I draw a lot, like I'm a, I, I do draw a lot from, biography I, th I think um sometimes the biography like branson branson's amazing i like i do enjoy you know reading about uh i was just trying to think of some uk situation you know but uh, but i i do um i do enjoy biography as well the Ni a nike book i just read too phil uh phil knight shoe yeah dog. phil knight shoe dog. And, you know I, i'm just thinking about you know just some of these stories that you go man that's you know, I, so I think actually when, if you ask me that question, I think truly I probably draw more from those stories about what people did and overcame and, and persevered. Um, yeah. You know, you know, I have this theory. I, I, actually, I've got this, I'll give you a movie, right? And, and I, this is a bit off center, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I, th I think The Wizard of Oz was the most prophetic movie ever written. And um prophetic book ever written originally. And I'll tell you why, because it's a really interesting thing. If you think about it, you, you, you've got your life and you're dreaming about going somewhere over the rainbow. 
to another world. And I think we all do this. I think dreaming is, dreams might mess us up more than anything else in a way. Um, but like, you know, we're dreaming about other things, something that we don't have. And, you know, she goes off, Dorothy goes off to, and find, to find someone who wants a heart, someone who wants brains and someone who wants courage, right? And they go to this mythical place called Oz. Well, only to find out that the curtain's pulled and there's no mythical place called Oz, which I think, by the way, the whole world right now, I mean, has had the curtain pulled. I think, I don't think, uh, you know, we have any, I think our idealism is, uh, you know, really taken a hit in the last decade. And, and, you know, the curtain's pulled. And what I love so much with the curtain pulled, the guy looks at him and says, listen, you, you always have had everything you need within you. And, and that's a useful belief. You, every single person listening to this has courage. Every single person listening to this has a heart and can love people. Every single person listening to this has brains and intelligence. And, and you know, and, and at the click of a heel, by the way, you know, we can figure out what's most important. And, and you know, that was, that was Dorothy wanted to go home. She wanted to be with the people that she cared the most about. And, and that's not saying for everybody, that's what it is. But I guess, you know, when I think about story, I think about, you know, we have everything we need. I know we spend so much time trying to find self-help books and, and, and there's so many speakers out there now that are trying to let you, you know, go get your trauma and bring your trauma into the current situation and re-experience your trauma. So it, it, look, there's, we have everything we need within us. Useful belief. This is the best time in the history of the world to be you. And life begins at insert age. If you're 70, congratulations. Life begins at 70. Boom. Right? You move differently when you believe that, by the way. Life begins at 50. That's a useful belief if you're 50. Life begins at 20. That's a useful belief if you're 20. You got everything within you already, right? To go out there and make your life what you want it to be. What a lovely way to end. Chris, thank you so much for your time. I'm incredibly grateful. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching the pitch black. I think I can start seeing the light coming through now. Um, but thanks for joining me this morning. Have a really good Wednesday. Um, tomorrow, lunchtime, I'm um, joined by two more international um, speakers. So Neil uh, Martin and Nigel Risner are both coming back for round two, which I'm very excited with. So um, I look forward to seeing you then. Chris, you have a great evening. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. You've been a fantastic guest and really generous with your time. So thank you. Have a good day. Everyone. Thanks, guys. And some Bye -bye. great comments coming through here now. Um, great positive start to the day. Great talk, Chris. Great energy. Love your passion. So thanks very much. Pleasure.